Greetings from your brothers and sisters in Christ, attending the Arkansas-Oklahoma Synod Assembly in Tulsa around the theme, Building Bridges, Racism, Diversity, and Justice. During this past weekend, we've been doing the work of the church through worship, attending workshops, listening to speakers, attending business sessions, and engaging in conversations and prayer. We thank you for your partnership in the gospel, your prayers, and for being church together with us as we do God's work with our hands throughout Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas as the Arkansas, Oklahoma Synod. I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you call us friends and invite us to love one another as you have loved us. Help us to reach out to one another and build bridges of reconciliation, compassion, and friendship that span all those things that would divide us. We pray this in your name, O Lord. Amen. I recently read a study done by a team of researchers from a number of prominent universities that determined friends share more in common than just interests and hobbies. They discovered that friends also share brainwaves. That's right, brainwaves. Oh, not in a telepathic sense, but in the way their brainwave patterns react to stimuli. They discovered this by showing individuals the same videos while tracking their brainwave patterns. And what they learned is that the closer the friendship, the closer the match was in their brain patterns while they were watching. One could say that the study confirmed what friends have always known, that friends are often on the same wavelength. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus calls his disciples friends. Of course, there are plenty of stories where Jesus and his disciples don't seem to be on the same wavelength at all. They often don't seem to get what Jesus is up to. But now, as he's about to leave them and go to the cross, he calls them friends. Through the Holy Spirit, he promises that they will eventually get on the same wavelength, his wavelength. Jesus promises that through the Spirit, his brain waves will become theirs, just as their lives will become patterned after his. He promises that when the Spirit comes, the disciples will understand what Jesus has been preparing them to do in the world. They will begin to live out the friendship that Jesus declares to them, a friendship that is about loving one another as Jesus has loved them, a friendship built upon their love of God and their love of neighbor, a friendship of reconciliation and forgiveness, of compassion and kindness and care, that's reflective of the ministry of Jesus that they've been observing and participating in during their three years of training. But this is no ordinary friendship. In an ordinary friendship, we are most often drawn to people who are a lot like us. We tend to befriend people who are of similar age, race, religion, socioeconomic status, education level, political leaning. People who like the same kind of music or movies and of course, according to the study, who have the same kind of brainwaves. I think that's one of the problems with social media. I mean, I think we tend to be drawn to people who think like us and to sites that just reflect and affirm our own opinions and perspectives. That's one of the problems with churches too. In workshops on mission planning and outreach that I've done, people will often remark that churches are places where quote, like-minded people gather. Is it any wonder then that in a recent study, the ELCA was shown to be one of the most white churches in America? And that's problematic. I mean, it really is. It's problematic because Jesus' vision of the kingdom is not like that at all, is it? I mean, Jesus' vision of the kingdom doesn't just include people like us. It's a vision that's all-inclusive, that involves people from all races and nations and peoples, it crosses boundaries of ethnicity and politics and all the other things that the world uses to divide us. One of the early struggles among Jesus' friends was the place of Gentiles in the young church. We get just a taste of that in the first lesson this morning. The question was, would Gentiles have to become Jews first before they could be Christians? And would the men need to be circumcised? The answer to both those questions was no. As their first lesson says, because they had seen that the Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles, just like the Spirit had been poured out upon those first Jewish Christians on Pentecost, they could be Christians and Gentiles. 
Clearly, those gathered in Jerusalem came to understand that the kingdom knows no human boundaries. And on the strength of that insight, the church has spread to the four corners of the world, inviting people to come and see, to follow and to be disciples, to be friends of Jesus, just as they are. Yes, Jesus' friendship is different. Jesus' friendship is a friendship that reaches through and beyond those things that might divide us. Jesus invites us to be friends, true friends, even with people who are different, even very different than we are. Not by changing people to make them more like us, but by welcoming them for who they are. Not by ignoring the differences, but by embracing them and the gifts that they bring. The love we share as sisters and brothers in Christ knows no limits or boundaries, because Jesus' love didn't know limits or boundaries. That's his kind of friendship, not the world's kind of friendship. We who follow in the way of Jesus are meant to be bridge builders. In a world like ours, where the divisions between us seem to grow deeper every day, where civility seems to be on the wane, and a willingness to work with those who have different perspectives seems to be getting harder and harder, Jesus' kind of friendship is needed more than ever. And it starts when we reach out to one another. When we reach out to one another and listen to one another's stories, we try to learn who another person truly is, to learn about their hopes and their dreams, their fears and their struggles, to see not only their humanity, but the image of the God who created them, the God whose image we all bear. We might not have brainwaves in common with those who are different than we are, but we share the same image, God's image. We share the same love shown to us by Jesus on the cross. And that should be enough to get us on the same wavelength. In Jesus' name, amen.